For more on China's space program, Amitabha Ghosh joining us now from here in Washington, D.C. He's a space scientist who's worked on NASA's Mars mission since 1997. Let's talk about China and its space missions. Next up, of course, he just mentioned Shenzhou 14. The mission could happen in the next couple of days. How will this mission fit into the larger space efforts of China? Absolutely. So let's talk about the Tiangong space station. So this is, this is this incredible project to put up a space station, which was launched, if you recall, last April. And so it will basically set up an outpost where humans will stay um, all year long. It's about 210 miles to 280 miles from Earth. It will be about 100,000 kgs and will probably last about 10 years. So now this Tiangong space station will take will be assembled over a period of 10 years. Uh, um, maybe it will last for 10 years. And it will be assembled for a period of maybe two years, maybe 2022 and 2023. So we already saw the two missions so far, the Shenzhou 12 and the 13. The 12 uh, went to the space station just for 90 days. The 13 went for 180 days or six months. And it just returned in April. Now. It's the turn for Shenzhou 14, very, very critical. It will, again, stay there for 180 days, and it will receive two very important components, the Ventian, which in July, and the Mengtian, which is in October. And these two components will be uh, assembled and put together into the main space station. So it's very, very critical. And then finally, in um, uh, around November, there will be a crew handover. This is going to be, again, the first time. So the crew for Shenzhou 15 will arrive maybe 10 days, 15 days before Shenzhou, the Shenzhou 14 crew returns. So it's very fascinating. You know, you're really creating a habitat in space where humans can experiment. And, you know, this is how you learn to live in space. So it's absolutely fascinating for space science, for the next generation. Um, and so this... Uh, and, and I think you asked me about the broader Chinese space program. So that's very interesting that you asked. So there are multiple, I guess, you know, all over the space agencies, they are looking at multiple frontiers. So one interesting frontier, and this was in the news last couple of days, was NASA, uh, NASA has this uh, Webb, James Webb telescope. So China is going to um, propose something similar to that to, to look for extrasolar planets. What are extrasolar planets? There are planets like the Earth in other, uh, which orbit other stars. So maybe, say, 100,000 years away, maybe five light years away. So that's the best uh, possibility of finding life in the universe. So, na so China has proposed to do this. Then, of course, just like NASA, China has announced plans for getting samples back from Mars. Very, very important. It will solve the life on Mars um, problem that we have talked about for maybe 10 years. Yeah, well, let's, so let, like, it, it, that's, that's an area where you've got a great deal of expertise, uh, Mars mission. So let me ask you about that, because just a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to a space expert in China about the Zhurong rover on Mars, the discoveries there. We also have uh, the Jade Rabbit rover on the moon. Um, these are exciting times, and these rovers play a key role as well, don't they? Absolutely. So think of on Earth, how did this happen? There were geologists who drove or walked or hiked to the various parts to study the rocks and the soil underneath. And this is what the rovers are doing. They are remote robotic um, geologists. And this fascinating data. And unlike the traditional geologists, these are really um, equipped with very, very sophisticated in instruments, which we never had. So for example, um, right now, this uh, the, the Chinese rover on Mars, it can measure the by radar how um, deep the water level is. So a normal geologist will not ha have had these tools. Perseverance rover can measure not just the abundance of the elements, but the isotopes of the elements. Fascinating. This thing on Earth is occupies a mass spectrometer on Earth occupies a huge room and this has been miniaturized so yes indeed it's a very yeah. fascinating space that we are going through to discover something you know which no human has seen before yeah. if you think of each of these pictures coming no human has ever seen this before. no it's a, there's no doubt about it it's a really exciting time and we can't thank you enough for your analysis appreciate it